Hey everyone, welcome to my channel where I teach you ways to make money online and become a freelancer. In today's video, I'm going to go over eight of the most common mistakes that people make in written English. And a lot of these mistakes are the reason that many of you are not passing your transcription exams. These are all very important to know if you want to improve your English writing skills in your personal and professional life. Before we get started, I want to mention that I posted a poll on my channel asking what people needed help with the most. About 50% said they needed help with capitalization and punctuation. Now capitalization and punctuation are two huge topics to cover. I do cover them quickly in this video, but I would like to do two videos that are just on these topics. But since this channel is more for how to make money, I ask you to subscribe to my new English learning channel called Sparkle English, and I will link that in the description below. And once I reach 200 subscribers there, I'll release my next English teaching video. Okay, so let's get started. So the common mistake number one is it's or it's. Many English speakers get confused about when to use it's or it's. Uh, this is even a common mistake for native English speakers. So the rule is you use an apostrophe with it's only when the word means it is or it has. Without the apostrophe, it's means belonging to it. So example one, incorrect, it's my birthday tomorrow. Because this should be it is, you have to have the apostrophe. It's, it is my birthday tomorrow. And here's another example. The dog was wagging its tail. Now, one trick is to try to say if you can say it with it is, if it makes sense. So if I said the dog was wagging it is tail, it doesn't make sense. So it has to be the dog was wagging its tail without the apostrophe. So this is, for example, the girl was walking her dog, her dog, the girl's dog. And this is the dog's tail. It be the tail belongs to the dog. So that's when we use its without the apostrophe. Okay, so number two, we have there, there, or there. There, there, and there are homophones. This means although they sound the same, they are spelled differently and have different uses. Knowing the difference between these three is essential when transcribing. So the first one, there. There is the possessive case of the pronoun they, meaning belonging to them. So example, the boys left their bikes at school because the bikes belong to the boys. It's their bikes. Carly and Joe are bringing their computers to school tomorrow. So just like before, we had it's without the apostrophe, and that was also the possessive. This is the same. The dog's tail, its tail. This is the boy's bikes, their bikes. And you spell it like this, T-H-E-I-R. Okay, the next one is there, like this, T-H-E-R-E. -E. There is an adverb that means in or at that place. So example, is Karen at the cinema? No, she is going there tomorrow. So she is going to that place tomorrow. There is also used as a pronoun introducing the subject of a sentence or clause. Examples, there is a chance I will win the prize. There are two boys in my dance class. Okay, so this is when we use there, T-H-E-R-E. -E. The next one is there, and this is the easiest because there is a contraction of the words they and are. So there means they are. They are going skiing tomorrow afternoon. They are going skiing. She said that they're not coming tomorrow. So if you can replace the there with they are, that's a good hint that you should use an apostrophe and spell it like this. They are. Okay, the third um, common error is people forgetting about the third person S, the third person singular. Normally in the present tense, we add S to the end of the verb in the third person for he, she, or it. So examples. He loves Italian food. She drinks tea before bed. It looks like it's going to rain tomorrow. Make sure to put the S. Don't put he love Italian food. He loves. So in the present tense, we also have some rules. If the verb ends in double S, X, C, H, S, H, or the letter O, we add ES in the third person. So Mary kisses the man on his cheek. We have to put ES because this ends with double S. The mechanic fixes cars every Sunday. It ends in X, so ES. 
The cat goes into the house. He watches TV every evening. If the verb ends in consonant plus Y, we remove the Y and add IES in the third person. Examples, she carries the books to her car. So carry, because it ends with a Y, we have to replace that with IES, carries. The same with study. The boy studies for school every night. Study becomes studies. Also important to form the negative in the present tense, we use the auxiliary do not. The only variation is in the third person where we use does not, and does has es. So, for example, I do not go to nightclubs. I don't go to nightclubs. But if it's she, he, or it, we would say she does not study at home. She doesn't study at home. Not she do. She does or she doesn't. Okay, and also note that the verb study remains the same. We only modify the auxiliar verb when forming the negative. We don't put an S on the end of the verb in the negative form. So you don't say she does not studies. You just say she does not study. This stays the same. Okay, another one, uh, your and your. Again, they're also homophones. This means, again, that although they sound the same, they are spelled differently and have different uses. Your is a contraction for you are, just like there, they are. You're going to bring the books to the office later. I'm talking on the phone and you're being too loud for me to hear. All of these mean you are. And your is a possessive pronoun, so we don't use the apostrophe and the e. Please bring your books to class with you tomorrow. I want them to finish their homework and I want you to eat your dinner. So these are all possessive. Um, my books, his books, her books, your books, not you are books, okay? Again, another one that's very common people make mistakes with is to, to, or to. To can be a preposition. We're going to the store. To can indicate an infinitive when it comes before a verb. We want to go with you tomorrow night, okay? But T double O, to, is an adverb that can mean excessively when it comes before an adjective or adverb. So I ate too much pasta for dinner, which means I ate more than I should have, excessively. Too is also a synonym for also. So I ate too much at dinner, too. So let's say your little brother says, I ate too much dessert, and you say, me too. It means me also as well. I also ate too much. Okay? And then two is the easiest one. It's simply the number two. I had two slices of pizza. She wrote two books last year. Okay, you must remember to use auxiliary verbs in negative sentences and questions. What are auxiliary verbs? Auxiliary verbs are the verbs be, do, have, will when they are followed by another verb, the full verb, in order to form a question, a negative sentence, a compound tense, or the passive. So a lot of people might forget these words. So for example, how you spell that word, or where you go tomorrow. You have to say, how do you spell that word? Where will you go tomorrow? So do not forget to put these auxiliary verbs, especially when you're doing questions or negative sentences. More examples, I no drink coffee every morning. You'd say, I don't drink coffee every morning. Do not. He drive to the party last night. You have to start with the auxiliary verb. Did he drive to the party last night? Another incorrect, she not angry. You have to say she isn't angry. She is not angry. Okay, now capitalization. Rule number one, always capitalize the first word of a sentence. This is easy. The woman is going to finish her taxes. Why is he talking to you like that? So you always start with a capital. Rule number two, capitalize names and other proper nouns. Examples, my favorite singer is Justin Bieber. You'd have to capitalize the name Justin Bieber. Donald Trump is a controversial person. Donald and Trump, you would capitalize both of those because it's a name. Always capitalize proper nouns in English. A proper noun is a specific, so not a generic name, for a particular person, place, or thing. Proper nouns are always capitalized in English no matter where they fall in a sentence. The names of cities, countries, nationalities, companies, religions, and political parties are also proper nouns 
so you should capitalize them too. So we have some examples of common nouns, girl, city, day, month, nationality, religion. None of these are capitalized. But the proper nouns, which is the specific noun, that all of these are capitalized. So a specific noun or proper noun for a girl, Mary. So that would be capitalized. Madrid, capitalized. Monday, March, Moroccan, Muslim. Okay, all of these you have to capitalize because they're all proper nouns. So more sentence examples. Jack is Christian, but his wife is Jewish. Sarah works at Ford in Paris, France. So Ford is a company, so we would capitalize that. And also a city, country, nation, uh, religions. Okay? Rule three, capitalize the first word of a quote when the quote is a complete sentence. So for example, if you're transcribing something and they say, Joe asked, do you want to come to the conference tomorrow? Lauren answered, yes, I would love to. Because this, inside the quote, is a complete sentence, do you want to come to the conference tomorrow? That's a complete question. You will end the, after it says asked, you put a comma, then you have the quotes, and then you capitalize the first letter. Do you want to come? And then Lauren answered, yes, I would love to. Again, this is a complete sentence, so you would capitalize the beginning of the quote. And also very important, uh, the last one we're going to talk about in this particular video is quotation marks. Do commas and periods go inside or outside quotation marks? Commas and periods always go inside the quotation marks in American English. Dashes, colons, and semicolons almost always go outside the quotation marks. Question marks and exclamation marks sometimes go inside and sometimes stay outside. Okay, so for example, James said, comma, and then the quote, I really hate meetings that run late. You'll note that the period is inside the quotation marks. Now, in British English, it's the other way around, but for most of these transcription companies, they want you to follow American English guidelines, and so that would mean you would put the period or the comma inside um, the quotation, and the quotation is at the end. And then you would have a space, and then you would start the next letter, capital letter of your next sentence. So quotations and capitalization. If you're quoting a complete sentence, you should start the quote with a capital letter, even if the quote is placed in the middle of a sentence. So the actual saying she read was, time heals all wounds. Because this is a complete sentence, you would start it with a capital letter, even though it's in the middle of or near the end of this sentence. If you're quoting a phrase or a part of a sentence, don't start the quote with a capital letter. So, for example, she called them boring, rude, and cruel, and she stormed out of the room. So, boring, rude, and cruel is not a complete sentence. It's just three adjectives. So, you would have this in lowercase, not capitalized, okay? And you would quote, put the quotes around it. And because that is what she's saying, and then you would continue the rest of the sentence. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, so now we're going to do a little test based on all the stuff that we've just gone through and see if how much you know. We're going to fix these statements and write your answers in the comments below my video to see if you're right. So number one, it's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. Two, my dog is playing with its toy. It's so cute. Three, let's go to the park over there. It looks really nice. Four, have you seen their car? They forgot where they parked. Five, he love eating pizza with pepperoni. Six, she goes shopping every Tuesday. Seven, I no want to go to her party. I not like her. Eight, how you make soup? I don't know how. Nine, my birthday is in January. I'm going to celebrate with a trip to Paris and France. And 10, my best friend is Christian, but I am Catholic. Okay, so uh, if you pause this video and you want to answer in the comments, that's great. If Or even just answer a couple of them if you have time. So that is all for this first part of my video. This is more a tutorial for people who are not native English speakers and maybe people who have a lower level of English. Because if you have a really a decent level of English, you should know all of this stuff. Maybe there's a few things you might get confused but most of this stuff you should know. So again, if you want me to do two more very detailed videos on capitalization and punctuation, 
I would love to do that for you guys, but I don't want to fill this channel up because it's a money-making channel. I don't want to fill it up with uh, English teaching videos. So I'm asking you to go ahead and like my new channel, subscribe to my new channel, and then once I receive 200 uh, subscribers, there I will post my next video on capitalization or punctuation, one of the two. So I'm hoping that these writing mistakes will help you in your next transcription exam. Uh, there's lots of things that you need to know, lots of homophones and all sorts of other things that can be really difficult. English is not the easiest language to learn, but that's why I wanted to give you this video to show you what I see a lot of mistakes that a lot of the people who comment on my videos make small little errors. And I thought this might be able to help you when you're doing your next exam to keep these things in mind, especially with how to capitalize letters and also uh, with quotation marks and then other common words that are misspelled. So subscribe to my channel, to this channel if you want to learn more about how to make money online. Subscribe to my English teaching channel if you want more videos. I want to do beginner videos and also advanced videos on learning English when I have time to do them for you guys. So thank you once again for watching my video and I will see you next time.